Be tough. Be strong. Be a man. How many times have we heard that? From family? From society at large? How often is that plugged into our mind to equate being a man with being tough? Now, let's examine what does it mean to be tough? What does that even mean? What is toughness? Is it somebody who's devoid of human emotion? That's kind of the picture that's been painted. Some grizzled Marlboro man with weathered skin and no feelings, no empathy, no compassion, no love in his heart. That's what we're told that toughness is. Or from a physical standpoint, somebody who could block out physical pain and injury. Football players and fighters who play and fight through injury. That's what we're told toughness is. And that's promoted everywhere we go. They want to talk about toxic masculinity. There's nothing more toxic than promoting that notion. And I want to challenge that a little bit. I want to talk about what I think toughness is. The ideas that I have about what it is for a man to be tough and strong. And it's certainly not somebody who's not in touch with their emotions. You know, see, when you're young, you have a lot of fire in you. And you're able to bounce back from situations. This isn't just exclusively to men. This is everybody. More resilient. So there's a direct correlation between resiliency and toughness. But as we get older, the longer that we've denied what's going on in our heart, the more brittle we become. Like an old tree that can't bend. And one strong gust of wind snaps the branches off that brittle tree. You see people who aren't in touch with what's going on inside of themselves and emo- emotionally, over time they become brittle and they become the antithesis of toughness. That's when one little thing can break the camel's back, the straw that breaks the camel's back. So to me, toughness is directly related to suppleness. The ability to, to bend and yield, surrender at times, accept at times, to have that discernment as to which one of those reactions is appropriate. You know, with my clients, many, many of them, pretty much all of them, have been raised with the notion that They must deny what's happening inside them and that no respect and no adoration will come their way if they're not able to eat it consistently. And sometimes before they have this realization, their lives have already been thrust into turmoil and disarray. Not that it's too late, but... If you are not challenging that notion, the earlier the better. It's interesting that true toughness and true strength comes when you are at your weakest. And don't ever mistake a weakened person, a person in a weakened state with a weak person. I know some of you know that It is just at that point when you have absolutely reached the end of your rope and you feel like a blubbering mess. That's when you are at your strongest. The admitting to yourself that you can go no farther with the way that you've been doing things. The admitting to yourself that I have been fractured. The acceptance of your current state the not lying to yourself about what these philosophies about toughness have done to you. 
when you finally fully throw your hands up and say, I can't go any further, that is a sign of strength. That yielding, that suppleness is a sign of strength. It's not combating it to the bloody end. It's accepting where you are. I, I often, sometimes I don't like to use the word surrender because some clients have a painful association with that word, and I won't get into that specifically on this, on this podcast, but sometimes it's hard to get people to surrender. Sometimes it's difficult to get people to accept but if we approach it differently and say, this is an opportunity for me to be honest with myself as to what adopting this philosophy has done to me. When you are curled up in a ball, believe it or not, that is the seed to ultimate strength because it's there that Deep, deep, deep decisions are made. You can make a deep decision to allow yourself to dissipate and not become the person that you know you could be. Or you can accept the fact that this is the launching point for you to become a fully realized human being, to become a quote unquote, a real man who's in touch with how he feels. You know, these things happen to us so we can get in touch with our true self. We can get in touch with the things that really make us tick and warm our heart and stimulate our mind. We've been taught to deny these things. Like a man is just some type of autonomous robot just running off of pure testosterone and male energy, whatever that is. And it doesn't help when society at large is programming us to be like that. First, they tell us they don't want us to, to be sensitive to what we're feeling. And then we get denigrated when we do show that sensitivity. Well, which one is it that you want? I don't put too much stock in what the internet and the news tells me. But check in with yourself the next time you're feeling at your wit's end. And know that that is the moment. That is the moment of true power. When you realize and you accept how adopting these things made you feel so powerless. It's a launching point. It's a jumping off point. That's true strength. The suppleness the receptivity, the openness. It brings clarity, guys. It really does. When you finally can admit and accept and admit to yourself, hey man, I'm not, I'm not at 100% here. Do you, th- do you see the strength in that? Do you see the honesty in that? True honesty with yourself. Now that's power. That's strength. F the TV and F the internet. And F what modern society is telling you about what a man should be. You're not a machine. You're not a robot. You're not devoid of emotion. You're not weak. You deserve this. You deserve to touch in to the emotions that they've denied you for so long. Trust me when I tell you, you will feel stronger once you let it all go. You'll feel stronger after you cry. You'll feel stronger after you pull yourself up by acknowledging where you are. It's simple in concept, but not very easy for many men to do. Because the, dare I say, brainwashing? Yeah. When I get men to 
accept and admit to themselves, not necessarily to me, but admit to themselves. Like, I'm not at optimal performance here, and it's because I have taken on this false vision of myself that I should have all the answers. It doesn't work like that. We all need to get keen on matters of the heart and not always matters of the mind. And I'm planting things in our mind that aren't true. But you know the truth. You know the truth. What does it mean to be tough? How many times have I struggled with that in my mind? How many years of false ideas have I lived as a result of that? I don't want to say too many. It was meant to be. But if I can go back, I would have given myself a little room to breathe. I would have taken that armor off and got myself to realize that the armor is not blocking things from the outside in. It's blocking my truth from coming out. The world and God and the universe or however you look at it, is not going to punish you from expressing how you truly feel about things. That you could take to the bank. Have a good one, guys.